Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to briefly talk about the announcement from Jeff Bezos about this, the blue moon. And this of course came as a surprise to many people because nobody really expected that Jeff Bezos would announce that his plan is to now go to the moon and create a lander that will be capable of delivering approximately six and a half tons of materials. This is it, this is what you see on the screen right now, and this is what he refers to as the Blue Moon. In this video I wanted to go through some of the specifications that I was able to kind of find out about, but they're not 100% accurate yet, because um, very little is known about this particular lander. So what do we know about the Blue Moon? Well, first of all, we of course know what it's going to look like, which is this right here, what you see on the screen, and we also know that um, the engine that it's going to use, known as BE-7, is very similar to the engine of a rocket that they've been testing for the last few years, known as a New Shepard. So the engine here is not as powerful uh, as BE-3 as it's known. This BE-7 is a lot less powerful because Moon's gravity is not as strong as Earth. And here it's going to use a combination of hydrogen and oxygen to essentially try to slow down and land onto the surface of the moon very, very gently. And this is actually the key here. Jeff Bezos specifically mentioned that the goal of this craft is to have a very gentle, very, very um, soft landing. And so this is what they're going to be testing and designing. And the main idea is to deliver various types of cargo, up to six and a half tons of cargo. As you can see here, they even have a very simple uh, rover that they'll be uh, sending to the moon in the next few years to uh, test this and eventually they're planning to send the astronauts to the moon as well using a slightly modified version of the blue moon. Now this of course will probably not happen for at least five years from now, possibly even longer and the first um, unmanned mission is planned for approximately two to three years from when I'm making this video. In other words, we're probably not going to see any action until 2022. And that's because all of this will be launched using this beautiful rocket known as New Glenn. Now this is a bit of a speculation, but a very, very, um, I would say sound speculation, because this rocket is meant for delivering things to the moon. And they've been working on this rocket since 2015. Now New Glenn is a very, very interesting rocket. It's meant to compete with SpaceX, but mostly um, with heavy launches, specifically Falcon Heavy. And that's because this rocket is way more powerful. It's about two and a half times more powerful than Falcon Heavy and has a very similar launch profile where after the liftoff and after the ascent, the first stage returns back and lands on a moving platform, while the secondary stage and pretty much everything else gets discarded on the way. And even though this is something that SpaceX has already perfected and has been doing a pretty good job at doing this year after year, New Glenn is far from there, uh, specifically because they haven't even tested a single launch yet and their first attempt is going to be most likely next year, um, possibly even two years from now. And also because this rocket is so huge, even compared to Falcon uh, Heavy, um, this implies that there is potentially a lot more chances for failure. But uh, because Jeff Bezos' main company, um, Amazon, has so much experience with automation, they probably will not have as much trouble as um, SpaceX. Simply because, well, if you've ever seen what the inside of Amazon warehouse looks like, it's essentially all robots and um, they've done a really good job at automating things and they will probably do a pretty good job at automating these landings as well. And similar to Falcon 9, uh, this here has at least seven of these really powerful engines. This is actually one of the most powerful engines ever produced. And this so-called BE-4 engine is ridiculously powerful. It's actually been chosen by the United Launch Alliance as the replacement for future rockets for NASA as well. So this has become a very successful engine even before it officially launched anything. This engine uses a combination of methane and oxygen and is approximately four times more powerful than the engine from Falcon 9 rocket. And just like Falcon 9, um, instead of having nine of these, it will have seven that will work in a kind of a failure redundancy model where if one engine fails, um, the rocket will probably still continue and still be successful even with one engine that doesn't work anymore. 
And all of the launches will be done from the so-called Launch Complex 36 um, in Kennedy Space Center, which is famous for all of the pioneer missions that explored the outer planets, the Mariner missions that uh, went to Mars, Venus, and also Mercury, and the surveyor missions that landed on the moon. So it's a pretty famous launch platform. And since 2015, it was leased by the Blue Origin company to create this rocket to try to find a very effective logistical way to essentially build the rockets right, right there on the spot and then bring them to the launch pad and launch them uh, consecutively. Because Blue Origin has a very, very unique plan that will most likely put a dent in the plan of SpaceX to dominate the industry. They're planning to create a very efficient Amazon-like delivery system of things to space. And that's their goal, essentially. They're trying to create a series of rockets and a series of delivery devices that will be able to very cheaply and very effectively deliver things to space, deliver them into high orbit, low orbit, and of course, the moon. Now, they're not going to be competing with SpaceX uh, for medium size or smaller um, deliveries. And there's actually a lot of other companies that will probably put a dent in SpaceX there as well. But for deliveries to the moon and for deliveries to um, geostationary orbit or higher orbit, there is a lot of a lot of competition that this is going to create. And because it's a company ran by Jeff Bezos, who is known to create these very complex schemes, I think Elon Musk possibly has something to worry about here. And interestingly, this particular launch complex um, was actually shared by Blue Origin and another company known as Moon Express, but that company still hasn't really developed as much as Blue Origin. Their goal is eventually to um, try to find a way to mine things on the moon and to make a lot of profit by bringing all of this material that is mined there back to Earth. But they're also not really there just yet. I think Blue Origin is a little bit closer. And so with the announcement of this very interesting lander that um, most likely will become a standard for bringing things to the moon in the next few years, we have, um, I guess, a new competitor, a space competitor, and kind of the vision of the future here. So what exactly are these famous billionaires planning and what exactly is going to happen in the next, I guess, five to ten years? Well, it looks like we're going back to the moon. It looks like... It will be these private companies bringing us there and it's very likely that we're going to be looking for a way to make profit from this and if we can it's going to probably create a new moon race a new space race a new race to well first come first serve right and just like amazon for blue origin i think the main goal here is to create a very effective logistic system where things can get delivered really fast really quickly just like amazon delivery Although I guess this would be a kind of a new level of delivery, space delivery. Now, I don't think they're planning to build a new Amazon warehouse on the moon yet, but I guess you never know, right? And by the way, there's a lot of other competition that's going to be coming uh, from other countries, like, for example, China. Very recently, China has announced that they have two competitors also building, testing and actively developing self-landing rockets. So SpaceX, um, even though they were the first, might not be the best anymore. They suddenly have a lot of competition coming from all angles because of what they were able to create. And anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully in the next few years we'll find out what exactly is being planned by Blue Origin and what is their actual goal, because a lot of this is just guesswork for now. But it looks like there's no doubt now that the goal for the next 10 or so years is to return back to the moon, to possibly settle there, and to possibly create some kind of a financially sustainable business. Whether it happens or not, I guess we'll find out by 2030 or so. For now though, I actually have really high hopes for this. These are really cool projects and hopefully in the next few years we'll discover if it's successful. For now, that's it. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and wants to know more through simulations and video games. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and as always, bye-bye.